as a field of study, uh, indigenous settler relations, the history of indigenous settler relations has developed quite a bit over the last 40 years or so. Um, before, I mean, I guess you know, the old school historians um, often interpreted uh, the colonial process, uh, to use a metaphor that's, uh, that one historian has used, uh, uh, indigenous peoples were, were the shore and Europeans were the, the ocean and the, the waves of the ocean just gradually swept in and eroded uh, indigenous autonomy and uh, sovereignty and uh, culture uh, and eventually these uh, sort of islands of indigeneity were simply washed over, uh, uh, eroded, disintegrated by, by the, the force of European colonialism. Um, so that's a vision um, which uh, no longer holds true. Um, certainly it's clear to us today that not only did indigenous cultures survive colonialism and resist it successfully, but that they in many cases became reinvigorated or reinvented themselves in the process. Um, on the other hand, uh, the, some of the historians who, who were reacting to that prevailing conception of the relationship um, insisted only upon resistance. And so whether it was studying um, uh, economic relationships or trade or studying the efforts of European missionaries to convert indigenous peoples, um, some historians uh, only saw or only um, foregrounded indigenous efforts to resist the European agenda. Um, I think a bit more recently, um, um, scholars have acknowledged that um, in some cases indigenous peoples were um, quite interested in what Europeans brought. Um, that there were indigenous people who engaged in some very serious religious dialogues with European missionaries. Were, were very curious about what um, spiritual um, power um, Europeans might be able to offer, what insights, what knowledge. Um, so it wasn't a completely antagonistic relationship. Um, and there were extended moments of, of dialogue and, and cooperation. Um, I, I think more recently scholars have acknowledged that it's very difficult to make vast generalizations you know, about Canada or North America and patterns of indigenous settler relations. And um, today much scholarship focuses on, on regional situations or even local uh, contexts. Um, although it's, it is useful to stand back and look at broad patterns, um, um, there are um, there's significant variation. Um, and a lot of this has to do, of course, with the cultural diversity of uh, indigenous peoples themselves across, the, across Canada and across the continent. Um, a lot of this also has to do with the range of motivations that Europeans had for coming to Canada. Um, so uh, the field has, has um, certainly evolved and uh, perhaps the most exciting uh, recent trends are uh, increasing efforts to uh, really appreciate indigenous perspectives of the, of the encounter. Um, and this may mean um, using oral traditions um, for the early period, sometimes a few, far between. Um, but nonetheless, these give a sense of how indigenous peoples experience the arrival of Europeans and the challenges they pose. Um, and um, in, uh, related to that, there are also uh, few but uh, important indigenous language texts. Uh, now, some of these were created by Europeans, um, but they, because they were created e using indigenous languages, they give us some insight into uh, the, the ways that uh, First Nations people saw the world in the era of colonialism.